single other set has gone game five. This was the only 3-1 victory, and it was Cosmos taking it over Ned. Not only that, but of course, Ned has to take two. Oh, he has to take man. two best of fives, when oh, nobody man. else in this bracket has been able to take even one off of Cosmos so far. And there it is, that music. We just had an insanely uh, insanely tight, insanely tense game five set. So All right, it's everyone in chat, it's take, Cosmos. <laughs> breathe in and breathe out. It is definitely We're here. Cosmos. It's time for grand finals. Let's get into it. It's time. OK, so. No big surprise. I mean, having a very similar start in stage selection to we had in winners' finals. Uh, yeah, I mean, these characters already starting out showing what they're made of. I mean, Cosmos, of course, oh my having gosh. access to this very fast, pretty much chipping at the ankles of oh Ned. Oh, no. And that is not how you want to start grand finals. Uh, you know, it might be. It, it, Ned's just trying to, you know, the big, oh, the big the psych fall. Out. You're yeah, right, the psych, the psych out. out. Psych him the, out. <laughs> the big fall for the big comeback, you know. Ned just dropped that stock on purpose, but I, I highly doubt it. Cosmos definitely played that extremely well. Got the setup into the, into the, uh, excuse me, uh, not prominence result. Myth was up, B. And yeah. Got the kill. And of course, you can see Ned really fishing for those nares, trying to get one landing because he knows that one can definitely lead into three or at least to get, uh, relieve some pressure that Cosmos, Cosmos has been putting out. He can go for the reverse nares in case he can get one into, into a back air. Very smart. It's the jab, though. The setup is good, but Cosmos kind of invalidates it with a really good side B from off the ledge. And that's something that I see a lot of Pyras do a lot, is when they're off stage, they throw out that side B because even if it doesn't hit, it covers that ledge entirely, and it just makes ledge trapping that much harder. Yeah, you can even see Cosmos holding down with the uh, with the recovery from Pyra, oh, going a little bit too far, but oh, back air, the back air so big, so strong, especially in that sweet spot that Ned found. Tries for the upbeat there, but Cosmos still had a little bit of invincibility left over from the Angel platform, so not able to do it for Ned, not able to get that extra percent. But the Nairs into the fairs are going to be doing just that. Dash attack from Cosmos that was so strong. Yeah. Even using the neutral B to pressure Cosmos while Ned up tilt? recovers. But up tilt, yes, everything that character has kills. I'm, I'm aware, everything. but <laughs> no, I'm not talking about the fact that it kills. I'm talking about the fact that up tilt covered literally the entire platform. Oh, dude, that sword is huge, of course. It's going to cover the entire platform. It's going to hit behind her. It's going to hit forward. It's going to do her taxes. It does everything. I wish I had a sword that did my taxes. Well, you can too if you uh, play Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and I, go find Aether. I did play Xenoblade 2. Oh. Well, well, Xenoblade too. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, though, Ned trying to make up the distance between the two of them. Gets a little bit, but the jabs from Cosmos going to send him deep off stage. He still makes it back thanks to the one wing, though. Regain yeah. center stage. Regaining center stage, keeping himself grounded. And really, that's been the most difficult part against Cosmos. Because as you can see, Cosmos continues to push Ned off stage into these, into these corners. But OK, that's a dead. Uh. That's a dead Aether. Absolutely a dead Aegis going Aegis. all the way off stage, not able to make it back. So now last stock, but very, very different percents between the two of these players. Ned has a lot of distance to make up. Cosmos only has a little bit left before he finds this game, gets the down smash. It's not enough to kill on Mithra, but no option there, just the jab. Yeah, went for a jab one, two. I'm unsure what that was, where we're supposed to be, but guess what? Cosmos still going to clean it up. Not dead just yet. Ned still with a fighting chance. Can he battle his way out of this corner, though? This is probably the difficult part against Cosmos. I mean, Ned's doing a fantastic job of it. 71%, that's pretty much kill percent if he gets the right setup. Oh, 84, sure. and Cosmos having a hard time deciding between Pyra or Mithra for this situation. Tries for the up smash, but Ned gets the back throw instead. Looks for the up smash to chase, but look, he's lost wing. He did lose wing. Yeah, interesting. That's Why did he lose the wing? And, but you can see, I can understand why Cosmos continues to switch between Woo! between uh, Mithra and Pyra. Mithra definitely has an easier time getting in on Ned. I mean, you can see the Look results. Look at Ned that throwing these hitboxes out. But Cosmos going to throw out the more impactful hitbox. Finds Ned with that landing fair, and well, that fair covers so much space. It There's does. really not many places you it's can a escape fire from up air. And, I mean. To, to give a shout out to, to one of my Mexican commentary compatriots, Colt, she hits like my ex-wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you had an ex-wife. I don't. Oh. Wow. Well then. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyways, yes, of course, that up air does hit like a truck. Um, and it just covers so much space. It honestly is very identical to like how some of the Fire Emblem characters have their up airs. Uh, but we're going to see in game two, and Cosmos running it right back. Gets the up B, though. And I mean, that's just the guaranteed 41% that happens if you get breathed on by Mithra at zero. Gets the foresight there, too, to escape. And Ned not getting any damage off of that up B. Honestly, that's. That's probably for the best. Last time that Ned got put in that situation, oh we no. saw... Oh, no. no! Oh, no! What were you about to say? Why don't you go ahead and say it? Last time he did that, Cosmos continued to down tilt F-Smash him until Oblivion, but who needs Cosmos when you can send yourself to Oblivion? Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate that both games have started the same Ooh. way, but the other game didn't have that. It didn't have Ned finding the F-Smash. Oh, yeah, that was the almighty equalizer, the F-Smash, which, I mean, I don't... I can't recall the last time we saw Ned do that move. I rarely see Ned throw out smash attacks that aren't either down smash or up smash. So seeing that up smash there and used to fantastic effect did great for him, especially after the SD, being able to take the stock like that. But speaking of being able to take the stock like that, the, the, the down air up smash, it, it does everything. Oh, man. And you know what's so unfortunate is that Ned, during the hits of the down air up smash, actually got wings and then immediately lost him. He had no opportunity to utilize his comeback mechanic. That's how strong it is. It's like you get winged, but it literally doesn't matter because you're dead anyway. And remember what I said about that guaranteed 41 or so percent with Cosmos going to take it a step farther. Tries for that down tilt and very nearly finds it, but Ned, good spot dodge to avoid the grab. This oh. should be a big punish from Cosmos, though. Yeah, okay, drifting back Ned Force to really make sure he doesn't go for those horizontal recoveries. We've seen Cosmos punish Ned over and over again whenever he does. I mean, I, I don't think we're going to be seeing many horizontal or even high recoveries from Ned at this point. Yeah, and I mean, that's something that Sephiroth kind of lacks that we saw, like, especially we saw on the set with Fatality, where Pyro and Mithra's recovery is super exploitable, but Sephiroth doesn't really have like, the tools to go off stage and exploit it. More so, he likes to stay on stage and wait, get stuff like that, gets that up smash, or usually gets those F tilts on get up mm -hmm. instead, and I mean, that's one of Pyra and Mithra's biggest weaknesses, completely mitigated. And guess what else was mitigated? Ned's second game, as it goes straight into Cosmos' pocket. Well, that puts Cosmos one game away from being the MSM 240 champion. Not exactly a position Ned wanted to find himself in so early in grand finals. The Cosmos is playing amazingly, oh, fantastic. incredibly, beautifully, another synonym. I, I'd never, or I have, <laughs> I have in fact seen this. Um, I haven't seen Cosmos play this beautifully uh, in quite some time. I, I did get the privilege of seeing him play at the comeback up in MDVA, the monthly that happened uh -huh. a couple of weeks ago. He was looking like this. I believe it was only Tweak that was able to take Cosmos down, which not too shabby of a loss, and maybe someone who'll get the opportunity for a run back against at Summit. Very true, if he's able to overcome his opponent, Ned, Guess what, Ned sticking out at Pokemon Stadium too. Ned is one of those players where if they get onto a stage, they'll run the whole set on the stage. Screw banning, screw counterpicking, I'm here to scrap. I, mean, I don't know, I, I would have liked to have seen one Northern Cave. Come on. Sephiroth, Northern Cave. Sephiroth. <laughs> exactly. Where else are we gonna get bomb tracks like that one? I mean, caves. not PS2, that's for sure. Definitely not PS2. Cosmos chasing Ned so far off stage. Looks for the F smash, but just barely just like ducks his head underneath it. Not Might not matter, though, as out comes the Pyra. And, well, she hits really, really hard, so Ned's got to be careful that he holds on to this stock. Tries to spot dodge that, but Cosmos right onto the ledge instead. Yeah, he was looking to this just in case Cosmos holding forward a little bit. Uh, no shield poke's going to be able to really punish the up B if it lands on stage. Now Pyra forced, forced to recover low. Cosmos finding himself stuck at the ledge. Oh! The counter, GG's, goodbye. The first time in this set so far that Ned has managed to find the first stock, and it's done beautifully with the scintilla. Oh, Ooh. Cosmos wanted that trump. Yeah, he not only did he want the trump, but he was expecting the lower recovery, or maybe even just uh, a little bit more patience from Ned on his recovery, but there you go. Getting the trade, that's gonna go in Cosmos' favor. 17%, literally nothing in the face of Mithra combos. One hit and this, this gap is gone. Maybe two hits. One, one more hit. One more hit. One more hit. Not going to be able to find it yet, though. Ned doing a great job of playing around Cosmos' movement. Yeah. So one thing I've been noticing about Cosmos 
especially against Ned, is he's there not it is. There's my hits. There, there's, yeah, that's the real hit you were looking for. Um, but he's not utilizing the, the side B for recovery. He's continuing to go low. He knows that Ned will, in fact, kill him if he goes for it. But, okay, one wing's here. So is Rapid Jab, and so is Pyro looking for the dare off of the ledge. And remember how I said Cosmos could immediately make up this deficit between the two of them? Well, now he's more than doubled Ned's percent. And with the back air, he's trying to take Ned's stock. He chases all the way off, and he might be dead for it. He, he is. is, in fact, dead. The reversal from Ned giving him an opportunity at life, which could, could have very easily have been a, a three stock to one lead. Hello? But, oh, okay, all right. That the looks clean like up? A little bit unfortunate DI. I, I don't think that should have killed as early as it did. And well, remember what I said about one hit from Mithra. This character plays neutral for you, and this neutral is 41%. Oh, when you have frame data like Mithra, you definitely want to go in swinging, pushing buttons. But not only does Cosmos like to push buttons and put the hurt on, but he likes to pressure his opponents with his movement. Look at how he weaves in and out. Whoop. Forcing Look at what Ned. Ned's doing. Going to get the up smash Whoop. and the shadow flare hit too. Cosmos. Maybe dropping shield a little bit too early, probably a little bit afraid of getting his shield broken, but still pushing the issue, pushing the envelope, making sure that Ned never gets too comfortable in neutral. Yeah, okay, but now that Pyra's out, you know, he's playing a little bit more, a little bit safer. Oh! The F tilt, and Pyra not dead just yet. Oh, the Octoslash doesn't count. We see a dash attack coming out from Ned. What's it going to be? The Blazing Edge? I can't believe Ned, or uh, I can't believe that Cosmos, sorry, I'm a little bit flustered after that, managed to make it back. But Ned throwing out all these up airs, these kill moves. Next one will absolutely take care of it, especially with wing out. But oh. Cosmos, Cosmos is your MSM champion. Gets the up smash out of nowhere, finds it, and he's going to summit. That's right, Cosmos is your LCQ champion.